welcome to another day in Kuala Lumpur. And let me set up the day for you. It's going to be a triple mission day, I think. Mission one is a shopping mission. I'm going to go to the Mid Valley Mega Mall because I need three things. So there you go, another three. I need a new camera, a new computer, and a backpack. And I'm going to, and I'm going to check out all three of those at the Mid Valley Mega Mall. Mission two, I'm going to take the KTM train to get there, which I haven't done for a very long time. That should be interesting, maybe, if I manage to catch the train. If I miss it, I have to wait one or two hours to the next one, so I better hurry. And for mission three, I thought I would do something a little bit different to sort of help me get exposed to more food and drinks in uh, Malaysia. On my trip to the Mega Mall and back, I'm going to try and eat or drink five different items. I often walk around and I'll see a little food stall or a drink stall or a fruit and I walk by without trying it. But today, whenever I see something like that and it catches my interest, I'm going to stop and sample it and on today's trip I'm going to try and hit up five different places for five different snacks. So step one, let's head to the uh, KTM station here near uh, Pasar Seni. Number one on my list of food and drinks might be right here at the Pasar Seni station. I go through here a lot and there's a drink stall here that seems to be very popular. I think it's called Tea Live, Tea Live or something like that. I've seen these outlets all over Kuala Lumpur, but I've never had a drink at one of them. So if it's open, that might be my uh, first stop. And it's open. There it is. Tea Live, Tea Live. I don't know how to say it. I've walked by it a hundred times and today for the first time I'm going to order something. Let's take a look at the uh, menu here, see what we've got. Hello. I think I will try an original pearl milk tea. Original pearl milk tea, not regular. 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 There's the uh, preparation station behind me. I ordered an original pearl milk tea. She tells me that the most popular one is the brown sugar bubble milk tea. Maybe I'll try that next time. And there it is, my bubble milk tea. I haven't had any breakfast yet either, so this is going to go down uh, very well. Number one, four more to go. I find these straws kind of amusing. They're so huge because they have to be big enough for the uh, tapioca balls to go through them. So it's almost like a weapon. It's like a knife that you plunge down into this thing. So let's give it a uh, first sip and see how it goes down. It's good. Tapioca balls. <laughs> kind of uh, went down the wrong way there. I'm not used to uh, eating and drinking with the camera on me. No, it's fine. It's very good. For my money, it could be a bit colder. I like everything to be ice, ice cold, so you can't put too much ice in a drink for me. Same thing with coffee. I want my coffee scaldingly hot and I want all my other drinks ice cold, nothing in between. I just realized I didn't say much about this drink other than that it's called a bubble milk tea. As far as I know, it originated in Taiwan and there's a lot of debate over which tea shop in the country invented it first. I think there's one or two in Taipei that say they came up with it first, and maybe even one in the city of uh, Taichung. And the balls down here are um, made of, uh, they're like tabioca balls, and it tastes like tea. It's basically cold tea with uh, tabioca balls, and these balls are really chewy, so it's almost like a tea combined with a kind of candy. Yeah, it makes it a drink experience and a uh, tactile experience. You have fun while you're chewing on the uh, tapioca balls. 
this did not last long. I like just drank it down so fast. It was like I was eating it rather than drinking it. And now we're down to the bottom. The ice to tea ratio is much better. So now it's uh, ice, ice cold. That's uh, my favorite part. Hello. We have one to Mid Valley. One to Mid Valley, yes. 180? Yeah. Thank you. I moved over here because it was way too noisy in there with all the construction. So I got my token for uh, the Mid Valley stop. It's kind of weird to take the KTM commuter train to Mid Valley because it's only two stops away and this train is meant for more long distance trips I think. And if I miss this train, the next one to come here to uh, Kuala Lumpur station isn't for two hours. So uh, I definitely don't want to miss it. Let's go into the station. Touch your card or token. Now we have to find a platform two. I think at this station they're used to seeing a lot of foreigners because everybody comes through here to uh, go to Batu Caves. <laughs> There's so much construction, I can't even find a way to get down to the platform. That's blocked off, escalator's blocked off, elevator here is blocked off. So there must be something around this corner. Ah, here we are. The stairs. That wasn't, that wasn't so easy. And is this platform two? Uh -huh. Well, it says platform one, so that's not for me. Where is platform two? I assume platform two is over there, but how do I get down there? <laughs> through all this construction. I have no idea. Platform 2 here, but this elevator is blocked off. This whole area is blocked off. So I can't get to those stairs. Platform 1 and Platform 2. This sign says Platform 1 and 2. Looks like number 2 is added later. I'm not sure what that means. So, so I'm not off to a great start here with the KTM. I can't find my platform. Okay. You kind of have to do... <laughs> I guess when they made these signs, they didn't know what was going on. They had to add a two with a uh, magic marker. So, I have to find platform two. But this is platform one. But this is the only stairs. These are the, this is the only platform I can reach. So I don't really have a choice. I can't get anywhere else. And there's nobody here to ask either. Well, just construction workers. <laughs> ah, I don't know what's going on. I only have five minutes left. Alright, I asked one of the construction workers, and I am on platform one, and he said I have to go down to the end of platform one. There's a bridge over there that will take me over the tracks to platform two. So in order to get to platform two, you have to go to platform one first. Alright, we're figuring this out. We've got it all under control. So the mystery is slowly being solved. Here we have an, a sign, bridge to platform two, three, and four. So the only way to get to these other platforms is to go to platform one first. Walk down to platform one, and then take the stairs over to platform two. Ah, that might be, that might be it over there. my train.
if I miss it, it's really no big deal. Then I'll just go to KL Central and do my usual route. And it is 10.43, and it's scheduled to leave at 10.44. So I made it just in time. They're really comfortable trains, air conditioned, very new, and all the seats are like uh, cushions, so it's kind of like living room. It's like you're sitting on a sofa at home. But from other trips I've taken, one thing I noticed is that a large number of the windows are broken. They've all been smashed or broken somehow. I'm not sure what's causing that. This is the map of the uh, KTM system. And you can see this line starts at Batu Caves, went all the way down here to Kuala Lumpur Station. Next stop is KL Central, and then Mid Valley. And we are off from Platform 2, which you have no way of ever reaching. An interesting thing about these KTM trains is that they usually have some coaches reserved for women. So on this train, there are six cars, and the two middle cars, the pink ones, of course, are actually reserved for uh, women. So you have to be careful uh, which one uh, you get on. Just for fun, I'm going to go to the next car up and see if there's any uh, broken windows on that car. I'm betting there will be uh, at least one. Let's take a look. That's yeah, kind of interesting. This car is totally different. It actually has regular uh, train style seats. So far I don't see any broken windows. And there it is. I found one broken window way at the end. That was the only one in here. And that's as far as I can go, because from this point on, the coaches are reserved for women. Next stop is uh, Mid Valley. So we're almost there already. So that was a lot of drama for a very uh, short trip. But as long as you have the schedule figured out, and you don't wait two hours for the next train, it's a convenient way to get to Mid Valley. I was wrong about the one window being broken. There's actually three of them in this car. There's one more behind me, and then one more broken one over there. So uh, somebody is uh, throwing a lot of rocks at this train, or they're just breaking because of pressure and they're badly designed. Don't really know. So we arrived at uh, Mid Valley Station, and you can see that these are the uh, coaches reserved for women. Juanita the local word for a uh, woman or ladies and they have it marked in English as well uh, coach for ladies only even the waiting area is reserved for women as well. So this section here, uh, only women are allowed to stand here to wait for the next train. But for men, we have to walk through this area to get to the coaches where we can go. So here I am at the Mid Valley KTM station. Just thought I'd sit down for a second and catch my breath. All of that bubble milk tea and uh, racing to find platform two and then filming the train has got me a little bit flustered. So I need to sort of relax for a minute before I head into the uh, Mega Mall. KTM, by the way, I think it stands for Karatapi Tana Malayu. And if you translate that word for word, it basically means Malaysian Land Railway. I don't know why they put Tana, land, in there. All railways are on land, right? But but basically, Karatapi means railway, and Malayu is kind of Malaya, or Malaysian. So it's the name for the Malaysian railway system. Yeah, K 
KTM is much, much bigger than just this commuter line. This is KTM commuter with a K. They also have KTM cargo trains and they have KTM ETS trains, which I think are the newest ones and they are electric high speed trains. I've actually taken that train uh, to go to Penang uh, once or twice. It's, it's a very nice train and they have like silver, gold and platinum levels based on the train. You know, a little bit more expensive at each stage and you get a better quality of snack, you know, when you get on the platinum train and it stops at fewer stations, more like an express train. And the silver one would be more like a regional train that stops at all the stations. And then I think there is a KTM intercity system, like regular diesel powered trains that go from city to city, like any national railway system. So KTM is much bigger than just KTM commuter. That's just one part of the overall KTM system. Now you know. Filming and doing anything is uh, more difficult than you'd think. <laughs> I haven't forgotten about my, about my commitment to have five drinks or snacks. I don't know how this is going to go down, but I just happened to see this also like a bubble milk tea shop. And I won't do another tea, of course, but when I was looking at it, this sign up here caught my eye. Get a cup of sweet corn, three and a half ringgit, sweet, hot, and tasty. And I can't say that I'm in the mood for a cup of corn, but that's the sign that I saw. And according to the rules of the game, I have to try it now. I'm going to get a cup of sweet corn. Um, looks like this is the uh, sweet corn here. So they have some available. So here they've got the uh, bubble teas, smoothies, and all kinds of crazy looking drinks. And waffles. But we are going to have uh, sweet corn. And I guess they uh, mix it with some kind of uh, flavoring of some kind. What do they mix it with? Butter. Oh, okay. They mix butter it with butter. Milk. Yeah. Milk? Inside butter and milk. Milk. Oh, okay. <laughs> and salt. And salt. Butter, <laughs> milk, and salt. And love. And love? Yes. Okay, that's the, that's the secret ingredient. Okay. The day's adventures continue. I have my cup of sweet corn. I watched them prepare it, and uh, with the help of another customer, I learned that they make it with corn, condensed milk, butter, salt, and the uh, special ingredient, love. And there it is, my cup of corn, balanced precariously on the railing. I can't find a place to uh, sit down and enjoy this uh, snack. There it is, you eat your sweet corn with a little plastic spoon. And a friend of mine told me that when I eat food like this, can't just enjoy it, I have to say how it tastes. So here goes. Hmm, well, tastes like um, corn and is sweet. I don't really taste the salt that much. Mainly tastes like um, sweet corn. It's hot. It's very good. Well, I finished my cup of corn. One observation I can make is that. Uh, you have to be prepared for strong flavor when you get down to the bottom because all of the condensed milk and the butter and the salt and the love, I guess, it all drains down to the bottom of the cup, not so much on the top. So by the time you get down there, you get some very powerful spoonfuls. <clears throat> Almost made my eyes water. But yeah, I would, uh, if I were hungry, I would have it again. Sure. Corn, right? What can be bad about corn? So there is Mid Valley Mega Mall. I hardly recognize it because I always come at it from the other side. And I think to get in there, we have to take this escalator up to a bridge. 
I don't think I will film very much inside the mall. I'm going to a camera store and the poor clerk has to deal with me. I don't want to put a camera in his face at the same time. This is the second floor of uh, the Mega Mall. There's a lot of computer stores, camera stores, smartphone stores. You know, there's a dedicated Dell outlet here that I'll be visiting after the camera store. So I want to check out a Dell computer, because I need one of those too. And there's a Sony outlet, and right across from me there is um, Key Color. And that's where we're uh, heading next. As far as shopping goes, I've had uh, good luck and bad luck. Bad luck is that my contact at Key Color, he wasn't there. I was given a name and said, ask for this guy, he'll take care of you. But he isn't working today or he wasn't available. And the camera that I'm interested in, the Panasonic G85, it's not in stock. They don't have any on display and they don't have any in the warehouse, I guess. They, it was hard to understand them. The guy I spoke with didn't speak much English, but I got the impression that they weren't able to order it or do anything for me, so I'll have to find the G85 somewhere else. The good luck is I found a great computer store. I'm kind of leaning towards a Dell computer because I'm comfortable with that brand and I can get a two-year international warranty and I think I know what model I'd like to get and they have it there. Really great guy, great customer service at the Dell shop. I didn't bring any money with me today but I just came here to check it out. And that leaves me with one more store I want to check out. There's a Osprey outlet here and I'm kind of interested in getting a backpack because over the next couple of months I might be traveling again without my bicycle to maybe Taiwan and maybe the Philippines and maybe even to Indonesia before coming back to uh, Malaysia and to do all that without my uh, bicycle I'd like to pick up a uh, backpack and Osprey makes a model that I think is quite good. Um, I looked at it online and I just want to check it out in person. And over there is the Osprey store, an entire outlet dedicated to nothing but Osprey products, which is pretty cool. I got interested in them because they make these interesting duffel bags called Transporter that convert to backpacks. And this is one of the models I'm thinking about. These are the uh, Osprey Transporter series. And the red one is 95 liters. And the one at the bottom, the big one, is 130 liters. And I really like that style because they're very simple. Just a square bag, you know, nothing fancy. And this also has um, shoulder straps, so you can wear it like a backpack. That's it for my trip to the Mega Mall. You can see the, uh, the gardens behind me. That's the way I usually go into the Mega Mall. I'm pretty disappointed, to be honest. My whole reason, the main reason I came all the way out here was to go to that one camera store and see that one particular camera. And as always, as often happens to me, the one camera that I really want to see is the one camera they don't have and they don't carry for some reason. They had the Panasonic GH5 which is a very great uh, camera, but uh, a bit expensive for me. And they had the G9L, which was even more expensive, and I never even heard of the G9L before. But they did not have the G85, so I guess I have to find it at another camera store, starting from scratch. And so far, I have uh, two snacks out of, no, yeah, two snacks out of five. I started off with the bubble milk tea, and then the cup of corn, and I might have number three. I just saw this little street stand in front of me, and I have no idea what they make, but that's what this whole experiment is about. I'm going to see what's going on over here and see what I can order. So we've got chicken, I am, uh, and rice, and what else have we got here? 
What is this? Yeah, Oh, iced tea. Okay. So I don't know if this counts as just one out of my list or four because I ended up getting iced tea, a banana snack. This is some kind of fish wrapped up in flour. And these are a type of vegetable with prawn and deep fried. So technically I got one, two, three, four items at the same place. But I, I'll, I'm just going to count it as one. Anyway, I'm going to take a seat at a table here. All right, it's time to try snack number three. Got the iced tea. And they got the ratio of ice to tea perfect. It's really ice cold. So that's great. And we have, uh, oh, I think these are the, um, these are the banana snacks. Yeah, it's all right. It's time to try the, uh, the other snack. And I think I was told this is some kind of fish in batter. Let's see what's inside there. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of solid on the inside. I'm not tasting a lot of fish. Uh -huh. It's good though. Mm. Now the, the fish taste is starting to come through. This took a while. So we have the last snack to try. I've got a whole bag of this, so I hope it's good. This actually has a lot stronger um, fish taste than the other one does. There's something fishy about this. But me being me, my favorite are the uh, fried bananas. Those are good. And this is the area where they make the uh, fried bananas. We've got the bananas here, kind of uh, rectangular bananas. And the batter that they dip them in. And I was told that it's quite special here that they have these black seeds in the batter. Not everyone uh, does that. And that's where the bananas are uh, fried. So that was snack stop number three. It was pretty good. Though uh, I'm fumbling around with the camera and all the snacks and uh, I was supposed to have hot sauce with all those fried dishes, but the hot sauce only came in like a plastic, tiny little plastic bag that was sealed with a elastic band. So I, I wouldn't know how to do that. I mean, I can't put the plastic bag on the table. It would just fall over and hot sauce would spill everywhere. And I didn't really want to pour the whole bag of hot sauce into the bag of other snacks. It would make a huge mess. So I didn't actually have any hot sauce. And I don't have much to say about that snack. I mean, the fried bananas tasted like fried bananas. The fried fish tasted like fried fish. And the uh, battered fried shrimpy things tasted like fried shrimpy things. All good. I wonder what snack number four will be. I think I found snack number four, manga susu. I already had uh, bubble, bubble milk tea and iced tea, so I've had two drinks today, but the rules of the game are I have to have whatever I come across, and I just came across a, a mango juice stand. So let's see if we can uh, order something here. So here they've got fruit in a cup. I thought it would be like a juice or a smoothie or something. And buy 10 cup free, one cup. Ah. 
Hello. Is that manga susu? Yes, it's one. Five ringgit. Five ringgit? Five ringgit. Okay. And here are all the mangoes on display. And I guess this is what it looks like. So you get mango juice, but they also have some chopped mango on the top. Manga susu. <laughs> this is turning into quite the adventure. You won't believe what I just got for my manga susu. Check this out. It's huge! I've got like a wide-angled lens on this camera and I, I can't even get the whole thing in there. It's so heavy I, could, I can barely lift it. Wow! There was no place to sit over there, so I'm kind of just walking around now carrying my massive mango smoothie or whatever this is. So uh, I'm going to have to find a place where I can once more set down my camera and uh, put the straw in this bad boy and uh, get to work drinking it or something. Do I eat it or drink it? I can't tell. Oh, this is crazy. I can barely handle the camera and this I have to uh, put on an exercise program just to have the strength to lift this thing. Anyway, the initial report is it is delicious. It's so, so good. Wow, mango smoothie basically is what it is. It is so good. But look at the size of this thing. Look at my hand compared to it. There's enough mango smoothie here for four people. No idea why it's so big. Maybe that's what they're known for. I won't be able to finish all this. I just can't get over the size of it. I mean, look at it compared to my head. It's bigger, it's bigger than my whole head. So I have no idea what's going on. Mmm. <laughs> that is good. I just wish I had a place I could sit down and enjoy it at length, but... There's really nowhere, uh, like, as always, I find myself uh, in a parking lot. It's where I always seem to end up. Yeah, and they didn't have any chairs there or any tables to sit at. So, yeah, I guess you uh, take them home and it takes you a year to finish it anyway. So you have to take it home. Just arrived at the Bangsar MRT station. My hands are empty, as you can see. It was hard. I didn't even, I didn't finish all of that manga susu, almost all of it, but uh, maybe about four fifths of it, one fifth of it, I couldn't finish. It was just it was just way too big. I've never seen a mango smoothie that size before. at uh, what seems like my favorite place in Kuala Lumpur, Pasar Seni MRT station. Yeah, I got back to my neighborhood and I thought I would shoot a time lapse of the sky with the uh, PNB 118 building under construction here. I was looking it up last night and it's listed as being the third tallest building in the world when it's finished. 
just behind the Burj Khalifa and one other tower under construction in uh, Saudi Arabia. So that's uh, pretty cool. I tried doing a cloud time lapse once before and I chose the wrong setting and it didn't look very interesting. And this time I chose a different setting but now it seems to be perhaps too far in the other direction. The file at the end is going to be 150 times speed and that might be uh, too fast even for clouds. Well, we'll find out. It's going to take me probably an hour to get a minute of uh, time lapse. That's why I'm lying down here uh, <laughs> resting. I was trying to sit on the cement but it was getting too sore. So here I am taking a nap at uh, Passar Seni. Better go monitor my uh, time lapse. Well, that's it for the uh, time lapse. It took about an hour and a half, maybe an hour and 15 minutes to get 30 seconds of uh, cloud movement. And that's the, the scene that I was filming over there. It'll be interesting to see how it turns out. This camera doesn't have a time lapse function, so I was doing that with one of my uh, smartphones. As far as my triple mission day is going, well, I'm back in Pass Arseni, so time is running out. I did go to Mega Mall, so we can call that successful, even though I didn't get to see the camera, which was the whole point of going to the Mega Mall. But I did go, and I saw the computer and the backpack, and I did go to the camera store, so we can tick that one off. Uh, second part of my uh, day, the ride on the KTM train. I did that, and that worked out all right. And the third mission was to stop at five different places to have something to eat or drink. And I'm up to four, but I'm only like a block and a half away from my hostel. So I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to run into anything uh, between here and there. But since this is Malaysia, chances are I will. You can't really go more than a block without finding something to eat or drink. That's one of the great things about Asia, right? So, I think we're uh, successful. I totally forgot about this, but just outside of my hostel, there is in fact a classic Malaysian eatery called Ramley Burger. And I've never had a Ramley Burger. I've only heard about it. And I guess back in the 90s, maybe? A local man, his family name was Ramley, and he decided he wanted to have like a fast food hamburger joint that was halal, and he invented the Ramley Burger, and now there are thousands of these uh, stands all over the place, and they're quite well known, and I think the secret to them is that they fry an egg very thinly, and then put the burger on top of the egg and wrap up the burger patty in the egg, and then they add certain sauces to it, and all the sauces in the egg, that's what makes it a Ramley burger. Anyway, there it is there, and that is number five on my list. So I'm going to have a Ramley burger. So this is the famous Ramley burger? Yeah, Ramley burger, yeah. And do you make a Ramley burger with an egg? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, could I have uh, one? Right. Yeah. Chicken or beef? Uh, beef. Beef, okay. Beef. Oh, okay. So yeah, they actually sell the Ramley burger patties in uh, supermarkets, so anybody can buy them. And uh, I guess that's where he gets them. It's not clear to me whether all the Ramley burgers are still considered halal or not. 
Maybe the burgers you buy in the grocery store, they're halal. But when they add all their own ingredients and all the vegetables and sauces and the eggs, I don't know whether you end up with a halal burger or not. I'll have to find out. So how do you say beef? Like beef, chicken uh, is ayam. I, I am beef dugging. Dugging. Yeah. Okay, so that's dugging. Hmm. So ayam means chicken and dugging means beef. So I ordered a dugging burger and I guess I tried to get one with egg. We'll see whether he understood that. I don't know whether all Ramley burgers come with egg or not. Spicy? Maybe half spicy. <laughs> Why is a Ramley burger special? Why why is it special? It's special with it. That's why. Yeah. Okay. Here comes the egg part. Square patty, more sauce. <laughs> I think I might take this one home to eat it. It'll be messy. Thank you. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Famous uh, Ramley Burger. So the Ramley Burger is number five on my list. That's mission three, almost complete. Now I just have to eat this without uh, complete mess. I think I've heard that they're quite messy to eat, so I have to put the camera down in order to do this with uh, two hands. So. <laughs> There it is, the uh, Ramley Burger, Ramley Burger Special. Okay, that's a good burger. Very messy, but we'll see what happens here. sit down and uh, have a lot of napkins ready. Yeah, and the, the whole the burger stand itself was uh, quite well organized, very clean. The guy was keeping everything clean and he was really busy. He was making those burgers as fast as he could. He had so many customers showing up. So there you go. The famous Ramley burger. Item number five. I did it. And my hostel is like 50 feet away. Good timing. And with a stomach full of Ramley burger, it's time to end the day, or at least the uh, end of the day as far as the video is concerned. Thanks for coming with me to the Mega Mall once more, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. The bonus question for the last video was about my Olympus camera. I asked you, 
What is so special about the sensor in my Olympus camera? Answer, it is a micro four-thirds sensor. This can be a very complicated topic because there are a whole bunch of different types of sensors ranging from the giant ones in medium format cameras all the way down to the teeny tiny little ones that you find in uh, smartphones and uh, compact cameras. In between those two extremes, you've got full frame, which is a really big sensor, APS-C, micro four thirds, one inch sensors, and a whole bunch of other specialty sensors. The key thing about my micro four thirds sensor in my Olympus is that it's a bit smaller than those that you find in APS-C cameras. Now, be warned, this is a very sensitive topic. People love their cameras. And if you get lost in the debate between micro four thirds versus APS-C versus full frame, things can get emotional. If you want to see some of that debate, go on internet, but be warned, if you go down that rabbit hole, you may never come out alive. The debate between the different sensors uh, involves discussions of dynamic range, depth of field, low light capabilities, and a bunch of other things. But for me, the basic idea behind a micro four thirds sensor, the smaller sensor, is that it allows camera manufacturers to make smaller bodies and more importantly, much smaller lenses that are still of a very high quality. And in my experience, having the smaller sensor also allows them to develop very high tech stabilization systems. Essentially, it's easier to stabilize a smaller sensor than a big full frame sensor. I think the full frame and APS-C manufacturers are getting better with their stabilization, but Olympus and Panasonic, the two micro four thirds uh, companies that developed this system, they've been light years ahead in terms of stabilization for a long time. The other companies are catching up now, but Olympus and Panasonic, they were the pioneers uh, in this area, particularly uh, Olympus. Anyway, without going on too long or going into too much technical detail, that's the basic idea of Micro Four Thirds. It's a slightly smaller sensor, and that has an impact on many different features and capabilities of the camera itself. I love my Olympus, I have to say. Um, I've used it for photography for many years, and I've always loved the sharpness of the images that I get out of that smaller sensor, as well as the uh, famous Olympus JPEG color. Bonus question for this video. How many Ramley Burger outlets are there in Malaysia? I don't know if the answer I have to this question is accurate or not. It's a pretty high number, but it's the only figure I've been able to find on the internet. So what do you think? Put your answer in the comments below. Answer at the end of the next video. There is no way you'll be able to see this on the camera. I don't even see it anymore right now. Oh, there he is over there. There's an otter swimming along the Klang River, an actual otter of some type. I didn't know they had them in this river. There's two of them. Just met up with another one right there. Travel tip 28. Read a local newspaper. Yes, newspapers still exist. In lots of countries, you can still find newspaper stalls at the side of the road. They have stacks of the local papers with bits of wood and stone and bricks on top of them, you know, to keep them from blowing away. And if you're on your way to a local uh, coffee shop or a little place to grab some breakfast, just pick up one or two of those papers and uh, bring them with you you'll really be surprised at uh, what you can learn about the country that you're in.